Welcome into Web Chat with the Mayor. We've got Pat Sebeski here to talk about issues coming up at Council. The very big one this week, uh, the Southside Pond uh, consultant is coming forward. He's got a very lengthy report for you guys this week. How many pages is that report, Pat? I think it's 180 pages, and no, I haven't read the entire report. <laughs> but there's uh, there's pages in there. There's seven or eight pages from the Upper Thames River Conservation because uh, they don't necessarily like the one that city staff is recommending. No, that's right, and uh, that would be uh, to preserve the pond, correct? Well, that's it. Um, the, the staff has taken a look at it, and throughout the public meeting process and everything else, uh, it was uh, there was certainly a very, very, very strong feeling from the residents that the historic nature, the cultural part of having a pond was important. And so um, the two came down to basically technically tied, but uh, staff you know, listen to what the residents had to say and have recommended the uh, the pond with a forward bay to collect the uh, uh, the sediment as it comes in. So in the future, you just have a smaller dredging projects. Um, but, and it improves the water quality a touch, but uh, um, that was the, that's really what the, the people are saying that uh, we're prepared to pay the extra dollars to maintain having a pond in uh, Southside Park. And you're telling me that figure is uh, an extra 1.2 million. Talk about the difference between the two uh, the two plans. Yes, the uh, so to put in a, to maintain the ponds so it looks like it does today. Uh, the cost is in the estimates uh, from the consultant 2.2 million, um, and that's to build a four. That's to, you know so not only do you have to dredge it, and the the dredging is expensive because the soil's contaminated, so it has to be taken to special dumps. So that's where the expense is there. But then you've got to construct the underground so that there's a four base so the w w water or the sediment can collect. So that's 2.2 million. Uh, if you just said, okay, let's take out the dams and just have basically a, a fast flowing creek running through from Upper Thames, they say from the science point of view, that's the best way to clean the water. And the cost to do that is about a million dollars. And so you're looking at a like a $1.2 million difference and you sort of have to weigh that. So uh, it'll be interesting because council, because if you're a, if you're a sci if you believe in science, you want the fast flowing crick. If you're a hard nosed accountant, um, you'd be saying that's the way we got to go, but you also have that historic uh, cultural part. So uh, council have to weigh that, uh, you know, a million two d is a lot of money. But the uh, people will look back and say, well, we've, the city just spent over $400,000 on a skateboard park there. The, uh, the new washroom facility was, I think, $250,000. So a million two over the lifetime, um, we'll, uh, we'll see if council's prepared to support that. And I, I think that's the direction they're going because it's, uh, there's very few people who, who want to see the, the history, the culture of Southside Park goes. So it's an interesting one for council to look at now that you have a sense as to what the price tag is for that decision. Well, yeah, because it makes it kind of two factors to one side versus the the historical factor. Of course, the people have spoken, but, you know, maybe would opinions change knowing that extra price tag now? Well, we'll find out Thursday at uh, at City Council, but I... Uh, I think when you initially think about it, it's it's a, it's a lot of money. But when you put it in, balance it against, in, in, uh, like the way I've thought about it is, well, we spent over four hundred thousand for a skateboard park, but and unfortunately, that's just the cost of doing business today. It's a nice park. We we'll give it that. It's a very well, nice park. And we're starting to get a lot more use out of it too, yeah. with Calpalooza and the, the uh, May twenty fourth parade ends up there, and the activities there. The hospital uses it, so it's good. Uh, it's uh, we're starting to use it a lot more. It is a great park. Um, the downtown community improvement plan, uh, the series of incentives that are going to be launched in the next year for uh, you know developers to to build new and spruce up what they have in the downtown. That's set to uh, pass at uh, council this week. Uh, that will come before council. We are, we're having a short public meeting before council. Um, but it will, it's on the council agenda. And this is a program aimed at, um, at the small business owners, those that own the small properties in downtown Woodstock, to give them incentives to uh, spruce up their property. So before, for example, we had facade loans. Uh, they were a little complicated. Uh, now we've added a, a grant component because we went to other municipalities to check their programs. Uh, and we found out that uh, certainly people like grants more than uh, being loans to pay things back. But it, again, it's aimed at uh, those uh, the small individual owners, 
Uh, for example, they could get up to $40,000 uh, if they put uh, uh, eight apartments above their stores. So it's again, so for, it's $5,000 per apartment. And for them, that might be the, a deal breaker in deciding to do it or not do it. So we're trying to come up with programs to sort of leverage uh, uh, the, their investment. And uh, certainly people, um, I mean, when you, you have family and friends come in to visit, uh, you often take them on a tour of Woodstock and you certainly take them down Van Sittard Avenue and people always want to see your downtown as a sort of as a, uh, a, a symbol of what you're doing. So by sprucing up the downtown, it's, uh, there's a lot of civic pride involved. Do you think, and the people at City Hall think these incentives are going to be enough to, you know, get some bites on the developer's end? Well, it's, um, you put them out there. It's a, it's, a, it's a toolkit. And uh, again, for some, it's, it's very important. Uh, but they don't necessarily work. For example, we have that you can build uh, a residential apartment building in the downtown core and not pay any development fees. Uh, yet, uh, we have a project, uh, a senior's residence being put uh, on, uh, constructed on uh, Finco close to the hospital. And the developer decided, no, I'd sooner build out there. I'll pay my $700,000 in development charges because that's where I want to be. Mm -hmm. Now, that same thing, same if the property had been able to be assembled in the downtown, he could have avoided that. So, you know, I mean, the, the, the developers, they take a look at everything. It's one-time cost. And in this particular case, they decided, no, we're prepared to pay 700000 to be out closer to the hospital than be sort of in the downtown area. But it's difficult in the downtown because it's tough to assemble pieces of land. So you put the incentives out there. Uh, um, We'll see what happens. And you see what happens. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, thanks for your time today, Pat. Uh, make sure you get to the bottom of that 180-page Cedar Creek report. I, 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 I know I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll, be, I'll be asking you for a praise before the council meeting. Okay, very good. Uh, those issues and more Thursday night at Woodstock City Council.